This is Black Nerd Power. 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 Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, one and all, to Black Nerd Power, BMP, be nasty. I'm your host, Mr. Richard Douglas Jones, and with me, the co hosts of Black Nerd Power, Mr. Marcus Seabury. What's up, my nerd? Oh, nerd to please, nerd to please, and Miss Kimber. What's happening, man? Hey. How's it going? You know, kicking it, doing this quarantine thing, still help us all. Oh. Yeah, are you are you now that that your work has kind of uh, been postponed? Are you are you hunkering down more? Are you getting out more, or what's what, what's going on? Are you under the impression that there's less work to do right now, Richard? Are you crazy? That is, yeah, that is the impression. Yeah, people have so many like schools. Are, schools are community features, right? And so, like when something impacts the community, um, if you work at a public school, then that thing has impacted your school, whether you're able to respond or willing to respond or not. And so, we responded to this with our community. We partner with other organizations, and you know that like what's available to people is changing daily. Like one minute they want niggas to run to put a put run to a Google form and put a, a, a put your email address and your information in so you can hopefully get two hundred and fifty dollars from this grant and then they want you to run other run the other way to fucking Raleigh to stand in the food line and keep six feet away while the police stand there. It's like it's a shit show and trying to coordinate to get people access to the resources that are available in the city. Like nobody steps in the gap to do that work as their professional work. And so the organizations that co- that have like quote unquote time, right? Our school takes the opportunity to try to make that connection because we're not in classes, but it's plenty of work to be done. Lots of community outreach. Okay. All right. Mr. Seabury, what's good with you, man? Man, just been uh chilling, um, working from home. Kind of still feel like I'm on house arrest, but you know, at least I get to go outside and see the sun sometimes. Like, ah, hello, Mr. Sun. What's been keeping my attention this week? Uh, a few days ago, I watched uh, Just Mercy with uh, Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dang, that's on video already. Yeah. So please. how did they do that? Because what I know about Just Mercy is that it was so Brian Stevenson, right? So it's a nonfiction book from the perspective of a person who has a lot of experience in the uh, American justice system and is talking about what it looks like to be merciful and just at the same time, logically just mercy. So I know that's a nonfiction book by a black man. How did they make a TV show out of this? Tell me what happened. Well, this is a movie. And it- okay. And, and I guess it's based on one of his more high profile cases. This guy who was just clearly unjustly imprisoned for the murder of a white woman, this black dude in a very racist hick town. Like uh, how was, bad was it? Like it, the victim wrote out the name of the killer in the blood and it's clearly not his name. They found some white kid who was like, who had done another crime and they got him to lie and say that he saw <laughs> Jamie Foxx's character near this. And it was just a complete, just bold face, whole lie. And are, are you it made telling, me mad, but it was good. Are, are you telling me that there is a black man who was wrongfully imprisoned? Shut up. Because of 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 uh, fake evidence brought against him. No, that's am, not what he's telling you. I am shocked. That's not what he's hear. telling you. What what what, is, what he's tell? telling you that Michael uh-huh. B. Jordan has a role in a film, being uh-huh. where he is like literally acting the role of Brian Stevenson, who is one of the like biggest voices for prison ref- not necessarily prison reform specifically but justice reform and how le- and how legal stuff impacts uh, impacts black people in America so he's not telling you what you already know which is that niggas can't get a fair trial in America we know that what he's telling you is that like a black man wrote a memoir that turned into a bestseller and now Michael B Jordan is playing him on screen how does how does Michael B. Jordan do? He he's he's always kind of come off as kind of stiff to me. So so like does he do all right? All that challenge shit is over with. Right. <laughs> I mean, he was he was cool. Uh Jamie Foxx was was solid. Uh Ice Cube's son, O'Shea Jackson Jr. Solid performance is one of Jamie Foxx's inmates. Except, man, just some really dope performances. Uh 
in the uh, white guy who who I guess co- coerced it into telling this big ass lie. He was played by Tim Blake Nelson, who Richard, you would know as Looking Glass from the Watchmen show. Of course, of course. Uh, or Mr. Pendansky from uh, uh, the, the great cinematic masterpiece Holes with Shia LaBeouf. You know what, dude? No. I looked at his filmography because of this movie. All I knew, all that I remembered him from was Oh Brother Where Out Thou and Watch Me. Then I started going about, I was like, oh crap, I saw that movie, that movie, that movie. Yep. He just one of them character dudes, man. He just like, he's like a, a chameleon, man. He just blend in and do his job. Like, alright, I'm done. Next, yeah. <laughs> next job. Is he one of those soulless creatures like Johnny Depp? Uh... Kinda, yeah. He, yeah. He's very much just, just a. I, he's like a water actor. You can just kind of just pour him into any role, and he just, he just kind of does it. Uh, he just, yeah. he just, that that got to be good money. Man, yeah. He's he's a good kind of character actor. He's and like fun uh, fact. He did voice work on uh, Black Dynamite. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was because like, I was going to his film. I was like. Okay, I've been seeing and hearing this dude for years and just was overlooking him like, oh, there you are. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. I uh I personally am cruising on zero sleep. Uh I've had like maybe an hour of sleep. Uh it hit I hit the weird weird and uh point of sleeplessness within the apocalypse and what did I decide to do to give my sleeplessness time to, but to give it to fucking Final Fantasy Seven? I'm about thirty hours into this game, and I'm still waiting on that hoe to get exciting. Like it's like it has those little bitty moments, and then it's just like, no, this is still just a collection of fetch quests and mini games. Jesus Christ! Do you know what, what? an RPG is, Richard? I do. <laughs> I like do. nigga. <laughs> Have you I ever do. played an RPG before? But I'm so used to the modern RPGs now. Like this is not a Horizon Zero Dawn. This is this is there not- would be no Horizon Zero Dawn without this game. Like you're yeah, kidding. No. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you're looking for. Lots of people have these feelings, but I don't know what you're yeah. looking for. I don't. Know. I don't either. I don't. I don't either. But it is like I. I I'm still playing the game because at this point, again, I'm 30 hours in, so I'm 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 in now. I I got yeah. it. I bought it and I'm finishing it. But like, like it, I'm I'm still trying to see what all the hype is about. Like, it's a cool little game, but like, I again, I'm I'm trying to 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 look at it objectively and not you know. If you were so, here's what I'm dealing with. If you were actually being objective, you would be making more sense right now. Like probably, legit, I was gonna say probably. if you were really being objective, you'd be making more sense right now. Because Richard, you know what the hype is. This shit came out in what ninety three. 97. 97. It came out in 97. You know, you above all, you and Marcus harassed me with old ass hip hop lyrics every time we came into the studio. It was like a hazing for like 18 months. Niggas can't yeah. never let shit go. Not Wu Tang farts and y'all, nah, not, not really. Wu Tang farts and you niggas named the whole show after it. Y'all love holding on to the past. Let these little mustache fanboys hold on to the past too. You know what they want? They want Cloud, they want Aerith, and they want Materia. Leave them alone. Yeah. Let them have it. That's the, the, that's the good things in like the ads, then. Yeah, because the ads be looking fine. I'd be like, I'd be like, oh, that look hard. It oh, looks no, like the game. ads. It looks like the yeah. ads to me. Really? That, that's basically it. Like you take the old Final Fantasy and like all the cutscenes, like the whole game looks like the cutscenes now, but better. It's lit. Like, it's called Final yeah. Fantasy it's, 7 Remake. The shit ain't called right. Final Fantasy a new level. What's right. wrong with yeah, no. <laughs> It's pretty as hell. It's pretty, but and 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 you know, the hack and slash combat makes it a little bit more bearable for me. Yeah. But but yeah, it it got into like I think like the biggest thing, I think part of the reason I stayed up so late playing the game was just like, I was just waiting on a place to just stop. 
I was just like, all right, let me find a place to stop. All right, here, shit, I gotta, I gotta fight in the underground thing. It's just like, all right, I'm done in the underground thing. All right, this is a good. No, I can't, I can't stop now because now that I've fought in the underground thing, now I gotta go in the mansion to, to get Tifa. All right, now I got Tifa. All right, now I, I can quit. No, I can't Tifa. quit now because now I gotta climb the stupid goddamn tower and fight the helicopter. And that, and after that, I was like, you know what? I'm done. I fought, a, I fought a helicopter. I dropped the platform. A bunch of people died. I'm done. I'm done. And also, it's seven in the morning. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we here at Black Nerd Power <laughs> are rooting for you, buddy. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, it's true. We yeah, are. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, in, in, in between that, uh, a couple of things. On a personal note, uh, I was finally uh, able to. Uh, get on stage for the first time last night. Uh, that was, that was, it was weird. I was, I was very apprehensive and, and, but I knew I needed to, you know, get that rust off. So shout out to a uh, past show guest and past uh, black new power comedy hour performer, Rob love for having me on his uh, uh, virtual show. Uh, if you look on his uh, Facebook page and Instagram page, I'm sure you can, see me kind of just wilding the fuck out it was it was kind of fun i was like i went into it saying I, I had a couple of goals uh i was like all new material and i'm gonna push through and do all my time and not fall back on old jokes to kind of get me through and I, I i did both of those things i did my time yep and that was about it yes child what what do you need because you want a hug? Ooh, can I give you kisses instead and finish what I'm doing? Okay. Okay. I have to finish what I'm doing. That's Grayson. Grayson says hello, everybody. Hello, Grayson. Hi, baby Gray. You want to say hello to my friends? Okay. Be very quick. Say hello, everybody. Here, into the microphone. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, Stinky Hey, Pie. Grayson. See, everybody said hello to you, too. All right. Can you go back and watch TV? Thank you. That's not, please understand. Uh, actually, no, I don't have to explain shit to y'all because it's my child, not you all, not you and Marcus. I mean, just the audience and collectively. That me and Marcus didn't say shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was just waiting for mama to speak to the child. She, yeah, it's all good. I she, mean, um, the real is if we, we work in, we working from home and yeah, our yeah. homes have to change to accommodate work, but work got to have some respect for the fact that it just came in the house. Yeah. Daddy, I don't know how to talk about my respect okay. the fact that you just came in the house work. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. For sure. Um hey, can I do some RIPs real quick here? Yeah, sure. I was gonna talk about insecure, but yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um RIP to artist Hector Garrido. Now in my childhood, he did most of the packaging art for the G.I. Joe action figures. And he's also done a gang of goth and sci-fi book covers. So he passed away. And then I guess there was, I guess, a semi high profile. COVID-19 related death um, underground rapper Fred the Godson passed away at 35 from complications due to COVID-19. Ooh. Ooh, was he living in New York? Yes. Uh, New York born uh, and bred, I believe. Uh, Petri dish that is New York City. Man. Uh, yeah, Insecure uh, episode two, season four, uh, came out uh, uh, actually the day we recorded last. Uh, it's it's taking an interesting turn. We we got into a heated, well, not heated, but a a, a lively discussion about the episode within our group chat. Marcus and I did. Uh, and and I don't, Kimber, what did you think seeing us go back and forth like that? So here's what happened. I refused to engage because I didn't know what your spoiler level was. And you say you don't give a fuck about spoilers, but I really don't give a fuck about them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so I decided to opt out because I know you watch in batches. So I nah, wasn't. This, I'm, yeah. I'm watching. I'm trying to watch episodically. Like this. this okay, good. Time. So let let it let it let the let the record stand right here. And right now that if I spoil that shit in the in the group chat and you started the conversation, don't say shit to me, Richard. <laughs> but so I that's why I was it, it. Cause he did start the conversation and I, I spoiled it. Yeah, he got a little huffy. I was yes, like, yes, I, was like my man, nigga. <laughs> I said, uh uh-uh, uh, y'all ain't gonna set me up. No. So 
I I mean, I still disagree. I just it's so complicated, y'all. My perspective on this, I feel like, and it might be self-righteous, but I feel like y'all see what's going on and y'all understand what's going on. But y'all ain't y'all ain't black women who ever been best friends with another black woman, baby. You don't nope. know, you don't understand. It's deeper than rap, Lord. It's deeper. And so neither one of them is right, right? It's just the positioning of the show. The fact that the matter is to me, I don't think neither one of them is right. And I don't think neither one of them is like fucking up either. I feel like everybody making choices right now. We gotta decide whether the choices that are right for us help us. Well, the choices that are right for us dictate sometimes often the relationships that are right for us. And I think we're witnessing that tension right now between Molly and Issa. Um, just like going from the very first moment of the first episode to the very last moment of the last episode, where the first moment of the first episode, Issa says, of course, you know, I don't fuck with Molly. Right. right. And then they flash us back four months. And then we get to the end of this episode, which is still in that flashback four months where Molly like, like intent, like, directly lies to Issa, right? After they was like, you remember they had that whole that whole season where they were like keep it 100 or say, you know, like real talk Malibu like, and all that. Malibu, too. thank you, thank you, yeah. help me out. And then we got Molly at the end of this episode like straight withholding on Issa and we have like ideas about why but we don't necessarily know why. So all that to say like it's complicated as fuck. It's so complicated and it's beautiful to me because black, I, like my friendships with other black women, y'all already said this like those relationships are so important and determining in like how you understand relationships and how you operate with people and what your boundaries are. It's cool to see Issa Rae like one, like I would call her easily one of the most gifted storytellers of our time, like an incredibly beautiful storyteller to tackle this issue. It just really honors me. It makes me feel good to watch black women's thoughts and struggles and loves and losses just be represented so beautifully because Issa, because at the end of the day, the dopest thing about Insecure is that it appeals to my physical senses. It's fucking gorgeous and the music is always banging. Sure. Okay. Yeah, no, I... I I guess on a on a superficial level, it it is definitely something that I have observed having you know both sisters, sisters and mother, yeah, sisters and mother and a couple of, of of black women friends. So yeah, I've yeah. definitely seen that where you ride she a ride or die one day and the next day you're like you know what I don't like that bitch and then it's just like you know what girl. What you doing, shit? What you doing, shit? You want to go get some pizza and uh, have the kids sit over here? Yeah, might as well. And then y'all friends again. And how much of that is and so like the the crazy thing is like we've both seen we've all seen those kinds of relationships play out like platonically and romantically like right. the crazy thing to think about is when is it that you're going you're falling back into those old habits because no this is an important relationship and it's worth pushing through this funky part and when is it like oh you just falling back because it's TSA Bay right remember Issa was talking about how she dropped TSA Bay because like mm -hmm. yeah the dick was okay like the dick was good it was hitting the spot but her side thing was becoming her main thing and that's just not what she wanted to settle for so how like how many of those friendships do we just go back to because we don't want to make new friends that's true I, it, 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 I, I, do, I will say this though for, for Issa I do applaud her for um taking the time to actually react to to that bad relationship with TSA Bay to for her to sit there and say that nah this doesn't this doesn't feed me let me go and bounce that that's big shit so, for Issa okay that's for her for sure yeah definitely definitely I mean well look this is my view just in a nutshell I feel like Molly was a little wrong in episode one because I was like Issa didn't go looking for this miss this miss just kind of snuck up on her like gotcha bitch <laughs> and then I felt Issa wouldn't be fair because I was like, Molly got a right to want more from her relationship. I'm like, let her rock. I don't think this was typical Molly self sabotaging. I feel she's like trying to go deeper with Asian Bay. I and just, it's hard for you to be trying to level up yourself and then telling your friend to settle like excuse. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, let's take a break really quickly. and We'll be right back with Black Nerd Power on the Kazuki Network. 
Corridor on Sports. 1968 Olympian, Dr. John Carlos. Oh, man, it's an honor. They need to pick up their radio and tune you guys in. <laughs> there you go. It's R&R on Sports. R&R. Black Nerd Power. And we're back. Black Nerd Power on the Kazookian Network. Uh, let's get into a little bit of tech talk real quick. Um, let's see. Facebook just announced a big old beefy upgrade uh, to their desktop because Zuckerberg realized that people are spending more time on the uh, desktops and laptops, if not as much time on their phones now. So he's had to, to do a couple of things to the website to, to make it a little bit more appealing, including adding a dark mode to the Facebook website and just kind of smoothing out some of the edges, giving it a couple of, you know, rounded, literally rounded edges here and there. Um, but in addition to that, they have uh, beefed up the, uh, the, the messenger side, the video conferencing side, because they, again, understand the times that we're living in. So they're, they're taking cues from the zooms and the Google hangouts and the likes, and, and they're integrating all of those kinds of chat features and video conferencing features into their messaging app. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg just did a long talk about it yesterday. So yeah, Facebook, uh, just, just getting with the times. Apparently that's, that's just what it is. Um, and I get- so rarely, Use the desktop version of Facebook, though. Yeah, yeah. If you go to it right now, like I'm saying, they they've introduced a, a new look to it. You can go back to the classic view if you want. But yeah, again, he had this like hour literally, long. literally rounded edges. Like I didn't notice it mm-hmm. until you said it, and all yeah. the all the corners are like so softly rounded. Yep. Not even much. Yeah. Nah. It's just a slight thing, and then yeah, like it's like I said, dark mode. They still haven't done it on the app, but yeah, on the desktop version, because yeah, that literally one of the things that Zuckerberg talked about because of the time because of the times we live in. Or, uh, I mean, okay. That's that's the present tagline for everybody because of the present times, because of the times we live in, because of the time, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, but again, long story short, everybody's yeah doing video conferencing now. Uh, let's see. Any so you mean things? Mark Zuckerberg's handlers because he's a freaking robot? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I don't think he does coding anymore. So yeah, I'm I'm sure he's he at this point he's got his own army of nerds to to do his bidding. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Fortnite hosted a psychedelic Travis Scott concert. In um, it was great. Point. Three million people watched. I was uh, one of them. It was amazing. Really? Yes. Really? How did you? How, what? What? Where did you? Which platform did you just go on? Uh, the YouTube. The, 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 the YouTube and streamed it to the thing. Oh. So I wasn't one of the Fortniteers, but I was you one know, of. The was. Tell us about it. So. It was beautiful. Like you're there are all these. So when it when it turned on while people were waiting for the concert, first of all, the concert only lasted. It was like less than 30 minutes, y'all, which is a perfect concert length for me because my attention span, the way it's set up, Jesus. So that you get on you. This person logged on to their Fortnite, and then they were just raving in this location with all these other people doing the weird head banging movement. And they were telling them it was coming soon. And then all of a sudden, everything turns Fortnite color scheme and it's fucking beautiful. And there's light and sparkles. And this gigantic ass Travis Scott just drops down uh-huh. in the middle middle of the fucking field and start singing like all the songs including I get those goosebumps every time and I being that that is my jam and a banger as well it was great like he and he had like it wasn't I don't know the mood it's just it, technology is amazing if it, it, it definitely like hit the uncanny valley in a little bit in a few places but at the same time like he looked very much like travis scott performing on a stage and it was so easy to see like the people who the people who were streaming just you could tell that the they knew where to go to make sure that everybody had the best of you and it was really cool like he flew he flew out for a minute and then like Things burst into flames and he turned into like half a cyborg at one point. It was lit. It was lit. Wow. I'll watch the next one. That's crazy. Yeah. It, I'm gonna have to it, try to watch this one. <laughs> you should. It was sure. fun. It was what it's worth the, the 20 or so minutes. For sure. It it's been interesting to watch how artists are having to to re innovate in, in this in this new world. Um uh 
if I can name drop really quickly, former show guest and uh, comedian Hannibal Burris uh, hit me up the other day telling me about because uh, he found out that I had an uh, Oculus and he started uh, hipping me to uh, spaces where they do VR and uh, on the Oculus uh, or, or just on the VR platform. There's a, a app called Alt Space in particular. And uh, the co-host uh, or the musical host of the uh, James Croton show, uh, Reggie Watts has his own webs, uh, his own uh, open mic that he does uh, via Altspace. Uh, and you can just kind of jump in uh, on your uh, VR headset and, you know, did jokes and played music. And then he does another one where he interviews Justin Roiland, uh, creator of uh, Rick and Morty. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's very it's very fun to see because, yeah, it's the same thing. He had multiple people that were, quote unquote, cameramen uh in in the virtual space and and it i'm sure it's just people and, and they, what they did was they just made those people's avatars look like video cameras so you looking around you see the cameras but it's really just another person's vr rig and they're just kind of going around taking images so it's very very fun to see the all the kind of things that, that I, I keep looking over at my headset right now i can't wait to get on it after i get a, an adequate amount of sleep which I laugh because uh, I know that's not going to happen because I have a three-year-old. I um, say, when you sleeping, my nigga? Uh, tomorrow. Okay. Um. So, yeah, it, it, you know, we we talked about, I don't know if we talked about it, but yeah, you know, they've a lot of people, uh, the DJ battles on Instagram Live, Babyface versus Teddy Riley, which really didn't happen. They made up for it. No, they came back like what was it Monday or Tuesday? Yeah, they came yeah. back and they did another one and it was fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Also, I keep hearing about the subtle shade of Babyface. Like I think uh, what shit subtle about it? He was was, nah, <laughs> like he, I think uh, Teddy Riley played the I get so long the remix. He was like, oh, I didn't know we could play remixes. I don't like, do those. Oh, oh, we're doing remixes. He said, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't do remixes. And so uh, he he plays this song that he did with Michael Jackson. And he's just like, oh yeah, I, I remember that song. Yeah, that's a a song that Michael Jackson did with Madonna. He and Madonna didn't get along very well. Uh, that's that's very well known. But what's also well known is that uh, they both really like this song. And he picked ah! up his guitar and started playing acoustically. When can I see you again? And then just yeah. done. Just done. He's sitting there with a glass of champagne, sitting Teddy Riley worried about effects and Smurfs and Babyface sitting there. Post coronavirus. Sitting there. Coming right. the car. Yep. Chilling. Looking like legit fucking Babyface 900 years later. Looking like yeah. he's been sipping that little stat number nine number the nine. whole time. He, he and, and is him, Doug Fresh, LL Cool J, and MC Light every oh. full moon. They bathed in the blood of virgins and drank the uh, from a vial of Lena Horne's blood. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the invite. Hey, and don't want... don't don't forget Angela Bassett. She the queen. No. That is true. She that always keeps the ceremony. She's she's they're they're grooming her for the supreme. Now that Le, Le, now that Lena Horne is gone, Angela Bassett is being groomed for the, the supreme. We thought we thought it was going to be Diane Carroll. She hung in there for a long time, but. R.I.P. R.I.P. to to Diane Carroll. Uh, Nobody misses you more than Sidney Poitier. Nobody. Wow. (laughs) Nobody. You know about that, right, Seabury? Yes. Get out their business. I don't know why I was about to say we're going to be messy because that's what we do. I I forgot where I was. I'm sorry. She (laughs) called him Mr. Tibbs. (laughs) What? (laughs) <laughs> ah, anyway. She called him Mr. Tibbs. Mr. Tibbs. Uh, Mr. Seabury, what's going on in the comic book corner, man? All right. Uh, I guess, it, you know, since I'm having to dig into my archives, it's another theme this week. This week, my theme is Milestone. First, I want to hit y'all with that static shock return of the cool. Um, rebirth. Yeah, rebirth. I'm sorry. And, um, First, it it gives you the first four issues of Static Shock. Uh, you see his origin. You see how one of his first villains is a bully that beat him up like the like right before he got powers, and he was a little scared, and he had to deal with that. And you also see 
the Big Bang incident from his perspective in the Milestone universe. That's the night where all these gangs got together and they were going to rumble. And uh, I guess the authorities put this gas out to try to track them. And it wound up killing some and giving the others crazy superhuman abilities. And um, and Static Shock Rebirth of the Cool is also kind of a milestone universe story. It's like Virgil Hawkins has retired from the superhero life. He's dating a woman named Madison. You know, he's kicking it with his homies a little bit. But like Bang Babies and other superheroes in the milestone universe are getting kidnapped by these, you know, these little military dudes coming around and, you know, jacking them up, scooping them up. And Virgil winds up getting back into the battle, and it's a battle that involves pretty much like the whole Milestone universe. It's super epic. Um, I loved it. It was fun. I recently reread it yesterday. I had forgotten how damn good it was. Uh, just another book that makes me hopeful that maybe someday Milestone will come back. I think last Dwayne McDuffie's wife was suing some of them, but I believe they worked that out. And another Milestone book. This is during the period when DC was like, hey, we got all the Milestone characters just sitting there. Let's do something with them. And they had a team-up book called Brave and the Bold, and they did some issues where DC heroes teamed up with Milestone heroes called the Brave and the Bold Milestone. Uh, you've got Static or Static Shock teaming with Black Lightning, you know, a team of people have wanted for years. A little interesting because, you know, in the DC Universe, Black Lightning's character worked for the Lex Luthor administration, so Static kind of viewed him as a kind of an Uncle Tom sellout dude. But then he learned, like, no, Black Lightning is really a good guy. Which and, is um, hilarious because every time I do my lecture on the history of uh, the black superheroes, people always assume that Static and Black Lightning are related. Yeah, I know. Like, like every time, the first thing people say, they're like, wait, I thought Black Lightning was Static's father. I'm like, no. No, he has his own children. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was another black character that shot Lightning from I think Boom or somebody, and he would comment on, "Yeah, I know, all those black guys shoot lightning. I'm I'm aware. Let's move on." <laughs> uh, there's also a team up between, I guess, the younger Blue Beetle with the mystical armor and hardware, uh, taking out the systematic bad guys. There's some villains that have plagued hardware for years, and you see the Spectre and Zombie. Zombie's an interesting character who was mortally injured, but they use these nanites to heal him, and he's pretty much invincible, but he has to be careful because when his nanites repair his body, they'll seek out and just eat up any matter near him, even humans. Uh, good stuff, really fun, and they throw in some pivotal appearances of zombie, static, and hard, where in the back of the book is kind of like a little brush her up like i said fun stuff i love milestone i remember buying the first issue was static when i was like the junior in high school i really 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 hope someday soon milestone to come back good read now the brave and the bold milestone is still available places like amazon sadly static shock rebirth of the cool is way out of print and the prices are ridiculous i'm hoping DC will put out some more static stuff because it's like static shock seems to be the success that they never wanted because like the cartoon was successful but they never put out toys and you probably heard this story before so many great cartoon shows have been yanked out there because they were like either they didn't have toys or the toys didn't perform well it's like and it's not available on DVD you can't get static shock on DVD anywhere no yes you can they really they, yeah, That's like cool. a few years ago, they started putting out all like the seasons oh, okay. through a Warner. Yeah, so like they remedied that a few years ago. Like I have season one myself. Okay, um, but but yeah, it's like I just feel like DC kind of missed the bus with Static. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Marcus. Uh, hey, uh, is DC doing the same thing that Marvel is? Are they are they opening up the digital catalog, or is DC just just being stingy at this point? 
like they never did a Marvel Unlimited type thing. Now you wow. can get access to some stuff if you have the DC Universe streaming service. Hmm. But uh, as far as I know, I, I don't know if they're like offered any kind of discounts or free access. Oh, I meant to tell you uh, the um, was the Empire. Yeah, Empire had their their quote unquote finale. Did you did you see that? Nah, but I read that it wasn't what they really wanted to do, but they had to shut down production due to the Rona. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like none of the supposedly it's the last episode, but like none of the questions got answered. Like you know, they're supposed to be who killed, who shot Lucius, who blew up Cookie's car, did they survive? Just all this other, like all of these cliffhangers that they set up at the beginning of the season, and just yeah, the Rona was like, yeah, nah, fuck your show, dude. Supernatural's last season was derailed by the same thing. It's just. Mm. crazy man like like yeah, I, I think most tv shows were kind of derailed by it because yeah most shows that were on the air running live right now were in the middle most tv shows are in the middle of shooting the the second half of the season yeah fortunately uh, the only 22 to 24 episode show i watch is flash yeah so like you know most of my shows either wrapped up or we're close to wrapping up how is the flash i i checked out after crisis i i have not been watching since since after the 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 crisis this year how is uh, uh, going on how is the world post oliver barry's losing his speed because the speed force is pretty much about to be destroyed because of you know because barry keep doing dumb stuff and keep mucking with stuff like time traveling and yeah yeah uh, Cause, Cause, I think he used some kind of power to boost the speed force during crisis, and that's leading the speed force to be to slowly die. And Cisco's trying to make an artificial speed force. Okay. And um, but that's you bad. know that's where Thawne comes from. Thawne made his own speed force. Yeah, and also his wife Iris has been taken into this mirror dimension and there's like a some being impersonating Iris now and, and and you know it's just a little interesting I guess side plot going on and and now this fake Iris has kicked Barry out because uh, <clears throat> Joe West has wound up having to go into witness protection because of this evil rich businessman they've been dealing with yeah it's a lot of crazy stuff man yeah, that is a lot of crazy stuff. I guess I have to get caught up. Um, is is Black Lightning done for the year? Because I, yeah, I, you know, Black Lightning like a sixteen episode show, man. Yeah, I'm, I was about to say I thought I was current, and the last thing <laughs> I watched felt like a finale. So I was like, if it's not, it, it should be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Black Lightning was able to finish. Yeah, and then after the last season, the Legends of Tomorrow just got silly, and I was like, I'm done. I am done. Yeah, me too. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's take a break really quickly. We'll be right back with more Black Nerd Power on the Kazuki Network. This is Black Nerd Power. Jazz, America's own original musical art form. When did it start? Who were and are some of the major players? How do you distinguish what kind of jazz you're listening to? We talk about the great and lesser known artists, songs and tunes, the instruments and the social impact jazz has had on world culture since its beginning at the start of the 20th century. Riffin' on jazz on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian! This is Black Nerd Power. I hope someone will volunteer to come and fuck me. Uh, this is getting ridiculous. Um... Please be 35 or older in, in the New Orleans area and able to come during the daytime, uh, preferably in the morning, and I'll show you a good time. I promise. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Lucy? <laughs> yeah. You got some explaining to do. Yeah. My word. <laughs> I, I guess we're back. I, I, I guess, I guess we're back. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, my yeah, these these what, these quarantine. What, what was that? These quarantine group chats are off the chain right now. So here's what's real. 
I'm okay. hanging out with my friends on the internet just like everybody else because it's lonely in these quarantine streets, okay? Right. And my friends just sent me a post from Instagram that I will, I'm sorry, that I will share to, um, I will share with you to share to the Black Nerd Power Instagram. It's of an older woman. She is white haired. She is in her erotic lingerie and she is in the New Orleans area posting a personal video ad saying, I hope somebody's gonna get this and come and fuck me and my friend sent this to me and she put an ad out saying like hey i hope you can come in the daytime um be 35 or older and i'll show you a great time this is her ad and um my friend sent it to our group chat saying this is how i'm gonna be when i'm 60 and my husband has died now i'm tickled at all of this because why your husband gonna die right when you 61 what that sound like and then two the video is it's really it's it it was i mean relatable content <laughs> i get it like i understand lady like she's stuck in new orleans it's the fucking coronavirus she you know what i'm saying she's an older lady it's not like bumble is like happening on her behalf so she's trying to get it how she lived like no shame do your thing do what feel good sis i hope you find some hope it's safe all right she won't do thing. she said it she said it and what's wrong with what's wrong with being open she said mm -hmm. hey Madden. What I hope for, what? she could be out here lying. She said, "Here right. go what I hope." Right. <laughs> what's, what's the old saying? A closed mouth don't get don't fed. fed. It's what, what I'm trying fed. to help you understand. And right. so right. we know what she's trying to put in her mouth. We we and we don't know nothing about what that lady trying to do. We gonna get out her <laughs> business. <Yeah. laughs> right. Sorry, had a flashback. Real. I didn't realize I was going to have to explain that to y'all. I call myself getting off to watch it. <laughs> nah, nah. But you can nah, hear that, me. The audio, the audio picked up real good. Picked and you up heard how good. many times I played it too. Because I had yeah. to play about three times. I didn't, I was yeah. like, what, what? Okay, so that's what I've been doing. Go ahead. Yeah. I was about to say, yeah, what else, what has you been up to? Because you know, you be reading this shit. Man, I... Yo, most of the time. So here's what's real. And I'm a, I just want to get this information to anybody else who has this same issue that they're dealing with. If you find that your reading stamina is really, really sapped right now, don't be hard on yourself. We're looking at screens all the time and going to bookstores and buying physical books isn't the safest option. It's easier to buy online. So most of the time you're reading on a screen too. be gentle with yourself. Know that your reading stamina is one of the first things that that takes a hit when your stress levels are high. Um, and, you know, just keep pushing at it. Find something you want to look at. I said that because I got a message from somebody saying like, I haven't been reading anything. I want to escape. I want to read escapism. And like, it's hard, but like, just be gentle with yourself. Read a little bit at a time. And if you don't like it, stop fucking reading it. If you're reading something that sucks, put it down. So anyway, all that said, I have given romance a break this week. Can you believe it? I am uh, giving romance a break this week in favor of reading a book in virtual community with some professional uh, friends of mine, some women who are in some black women. They are specifically black women who are in professional spaces in Memphis that operate as like nonprofit educational or corporate like corporate like good corporate good sector in Memphis, Tennessee. And we're reading a book called more than ready. It's called more than ready. It's called, it's called more than ready. And the subtitle is be strong, be you and other lessons for women of color on the rise. So I'm reading this book in community with some other women and it's by a woman named Cecilia Munoz. She is, she opens the book talking about how like, we know, we know all the, we know all those great headlines we hear about black women, black women attain degrees at such and so rate more so than such and so black women who are black women are the first to do this and the first to do that. And this black woman was the first to do this, that and the third. And so this narrative about us being, you know, the first this that narrative that feeds off black exceptionalism, which we know is violent and dangerous, like. It says like that, oh, we're the first people to do all this stuff. But also as a part of that narrative, it's like a necessity that we doubt ourselves and say, oh, well, we can't do this before someone else does it. Or wait, are we the right person to do this? Or is it really me? And this book really just pushes at that idea that like, first of all, ain't nobody going to be able to do what you've done because historically we haven't had an opportunity yet. So sometimes you're going to be the first. So get the fuck up and go. And then the other, well, she doesn't say it, like she's very much more tactful, but y'all know who y'all talking to. So shut up. So 
but she, so there's that aspect of it. And then there's just that simple of ideas like, if not me, who? If not now, then when, goddammit? And what we waiting on the world to just end? Donald Trump already the president. Niggas already in what we what we doing? Huffing bleach this week to get rid of the coronavirus? But we licking we licking inject, turtle shells. Injecting. Not oh, huffing, okay. Injecting. Well, let me let me know when they go to the to the cocaine sprinkling part of it. I don't understand. And so this book is just pushing at the idea of like, don't wait. Do it. Do what you know you can do because you're about to change the world. The fact is, nobody else has to like you have to. And so you do it and don't wait for someone else. So I'm really enjoying that book. I'm enjoying reading it, especially in community with these other with these other women who I feel like empathize with my plight as a black woman operating in the education space in Memphis. And it's been a it's been um it's honestly been a good relief from romance because that's not always the quality of writing I'm looking for. I having you know been having just been married professionally to text as a reading teacher i want to read academic books sometimes so i'm glad i jumped into that one um so that's what i've been reading this week what i've been playing this week is sushi go it's so cute oh my gosh so go is that card game where you try it's kind of like you're trying to get certain suits so you get your points or whatever at the end but they take the regular card deck and turn it into all these cute sushi characters and you can get like combinations of sushi to get certain points like you can gather up all your desserts and they're scored at the end of the game because the game is played in rounds or you can get three sashimis for 10 points or two dumplings for a certain number of points so it's a really cute really fast paced game you can play it in person you can go buy sushi go at um like target or walmart or order it on amazon or something like that um or you can play it on your cell phone. There's a Sushi Go app. You can also play it on this website called Board Game Arena. Are there any of y'all out there who are listening who play on Board Game Arena? If you play on Board Game Arena, find me. I'm Afro Kimber. I need people to play with. So Board Game Arena is this online um, fucking arena, Richard, Marcus, hello. Um, where there are all these games that are hosted. Like they buy licenses from these gaming brands like Sushi Go, like Seasons 52. And then they create a like online rendering of the board and you interact with other players live to play it. And there's a premium version and a free version. And I've been playing on the free version because what's lit is if you got a friend with the premium version, they can just invite you to play the premium game with them. And what's great about that is I don't want to play with no motherfucker that ain't really my friend anyway, except y'all. If one of y'all friend me, that's different because I know y'all and I know you black. Other these other like white strangers, I don't do that. Um, so yeah, if you want to play on board game arena, and there are a ton of games on there, so jump on. So I was being go ahead, Mike. Sorry. Okay. I I just been curious about gaming in general because like I keep going to tar- uh, Target and I just see these. Like I saw a choose your own adventures game that, that was based on the books I read when I was little. Like I saw a Kenny G game called Keep It Sexy. Come on, keep it sexy. That shit lying to be fun. Here go what's real markets. Do not underestimate these games. Board games are big damn business right now, and nerds got money. So they be funding these weird projects that turn out to be amazing ass games. If keep it sexy looks fun to you. Pick first of all, go on. You can either go on Board Game Geek, go on Board Game Geek. Board Game Geek is a great place. They call it the Geek. It's really, really great for like reading reviews of games, looking at how hard the game is, how long it'll take you to get into it. You're listening to Black Nerd Power, and we don't have to say the station, so I always forget that and probably ruin the spot, but whatever. So you can go on Board Game Geek. Kirk can edit that out. You can go on Board Game Geek and get a rundown of the game to see if you actually be interested in playing it. And also, if that game, if there's another, if there's a game you love, you can look it up on the on Board Game Geek and see games that are similar to it that have like the same like number of players involved or the same level of difficulty involved or the same amount of time that it takes to play it. So like they got like Monopoly. On board game arena? Yeah, I'm asking. I feel like they should have Monopoly on board game arena, but the reason I've never looked is because I hate Monopoly. I'm real sorry. Really? I hate Monopoly. I'm I'm real good at it. 
I'm real good at it, but niggas always beefing. You can't be a black girl good at Monopoly, man. A nigga try to fight you, and then you got to beat ass over Monopoly. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm, nah, I'm, nigga. Ask me how I, mean, I know. Trigger, no trigger. Yeah. trigger. <laughs> Two of my cousins did get in an ugly, ugly dispute over a long ass Monopoly game because my one cousin just kept doing little wag shit to make the game just. I'm talking this game wound up taking like seven, eight hours. And my other cousin yeah. lost it and got in the face and was talking crazy to her. And I was like, are my two girl cousins trying to beat each other ass right now? Yeah. Like, my family, we are not allowed. To, my cousins, we're all grown. We are not allowed to play Monopoly or Sorry together. We're not allowed. Sorry, I've been done broke that thing. Sorry yeah. didn't make it through a whole, uh, through a whole, like if a nigga got sorry for Christmas and you brought it to grandma house, your sorry game was broke. We was fucking it up. We were, it was just so aggressive. The one, but we could play sorry without fighting. The mm -hmm. games in my family that niggas do not need to play, fucking taboo Jesus. Don't do it. <laughs> taboo's taboo's fun. That's we can't part. do taboo. We get we get bad and monopoly. I don't fuck with monopoly. So sorry about that. I didn't mean to go off on this tangent. That's all good. But uh, we black though. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, no. Nah, sorry is is not allowed because yeah, I think the last time we played, uh I I believe one cousin said to the other, Yeah, it's called sorry. Now take your sorry ass in the kitchen and give me a drink. And yeah. then the board flipped. Yeah. And then it was done. It was done. We can't. And, and at that point, I think my aunt was like, "Y'all can't play this goddamn game no more. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm play this game no more. None of you." We was like, "We're in college." It's like I didn't give a damn. Nobody plays sorry, and so we ain't played sorry since like, like, like Ot two. And that's it. Uh, let's get to some uh, awards, shall we? Uh, I've got a, I've got a, a very interesting uh, zelly uh, that that I would like to to give out today. Let me let me pull let me pull that up. Uh, uh, Friday was the uh, the NFL draft, and and like everything else, uh, we, you know, responding to the, the oh time. Lord Isaiah Wilson's mama, um, yeah, Ooh. yeah. Oh my God, oh, Isaiah Lord. Wilson. I wonder if her mom. name is Miss Wilson. Let me find look, out her name. Yeah, look, look that up for me, please. But here's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. So Isaiah Wilson got drafted by the Tennessee Titans, and they cut to him, and his his girlfriend is is sitting in. I, I, I'm assuming the woman was his girlfriend. Is sitting in his lap, and they mention that he got drafted, and she's just being all loving and hugging him, and his mom is standing next to him, very much like, "No, this is my baby's moment. Let him have his shine by himself." So she at first she was nice about it. She's like, "No, baby, move so he can be on camera," and then she straight up lifted her. <laughs> she lift, she tossed her like Uncle Phil. You understand? <laughs> she, <laughs> tossed her, she tossed her like Uncle Phil tossed jazz. You literally yeah. heard the, ah! like you <laughs> ah! had on the you starter shirt it. and everything. Yeah. She had it, was, on the, it was bad. She snatched and y'all, I'm y'all gotta help us out. I went to the root. I do not see her name. And I fuck with the energy though, because yeah. Based on what this mama did, this mama didn't snatch this white girl out the way and sit down herself. She no. snatched the lady, and I'm doing good to call her lady because I ain't got no yeah, problem with this little I, white girl. You understand? I, I ain't got no issue with her. She just can't help how she look right now, the black American. I'm frustrated by that. True indeed. So, True you know indeed. what I'm saying? So, she didn't snatch the little white girl out the way and sit down so America could see her face. She snatched the white girl out the way and said, look at Isaiah Wilson. Look at my baby. Please. Right. Look at my you son. Know, you know how much, right? You know how much I sacrificed to get to this moment? You you knew. You knew. Hey, so, get out of here. Then I'm laying all over his head so America can see you. I, right. I, 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 I there. You know, I believe in true love. And don't get me wrong, that little girl might have rolled for Isaiah Wilson. We don't know her. Don't you make that face, Richard. You stop it. Mm -mm. No. Here, no, in, we here don't on know Al, their life. Here on you, Al Gore's you, internet. You right, Marcus. You tell him. You don't, he don't know their life. 
but we got a pretty we 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 don't but we 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 have definitely all formulated an opinion (laughs) it's unfortunate but it's it's so sad that she just didn't have a sense to get out the way because what's real is she she could have looked one way like she could have looked like somebody who went on and got up and did what the black mama told her to do unfortunately she looked like the white hoe that got had to be tossed to the side like last what last week's dirty dishwater like like jazz off the front porch. No, it, like as soon as I saw it, I was like, "That's that's the perfect way to ah, that's perfect." I just hope she don't wind up like that white girl that was all happy when uh Russell Wilson got drafted. I believe <laughs> oh, you thought you was in the money, didn't you? Nah, we, <laughs> we're all pretty sure that's exactly what's going to happen. That's what we've been dancing around about, like. Yeah, as soon as I saw it, I was like, "Yeah, nah, she will, she won't, she won't be there long. If she is, she she'll be relegated to 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 side chick uh, territory." I don't think we know these things. I don't think we know the future, and I don't want to look like a sucker guessing on young love. I just want to keep the focus on mom and say I mess with mom's energy. Mom's name is not out here. Mom is not like we don't even know mom's name. We haven't seen mom's face. She like the mama in uh. She like well. She like the Muppet Baby Mama. You know what I'm saying? And and that, like you said, yeah. She at no point was trying to interject herself at all. Like you see, like like a like a hand and a hip. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Jeez. We know. We know. Maybe what that lady skin tone is, and we can tell maybe a little bit about her body type, and that's yeah. all. We can't know. We don't know nothing else. So yeah. So to you, uh, uh, Isaiah. Uh, let me see, Isaiah, Isaiah Wilson's, Wilson's mom. mama. Let's just let's just say yeah, Isaiah Wilson's mom. Uh, we we don't know her name at this point. Uh, so yes, to you, Isaiah Wilson's mom for 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 strong arm and a hoe. The only way a black uh, uh, for strong arm and a hoe like only a black mother can. Let's truly, <laughs> truly, truly from the bottom of my heart. This this comes truly from the bottom of my heart, Richie. From the bottom. <laughs> We we salute you the best way we know how on this show, and that is to say, ha 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 ha! My my Anybody else got any awards? I, I want to give out a wish, but it's just so much fuckery. It's like, how do you pinpoint? Because like our president telling folks to inject disinfectant. He's te- not only is he, he, he's not just telling people, right? right oh, okay, sweetheart. He's not just telling people, okay? It's, it's not just, he's telling doctors. He is telling medical doctors, well, maybe we're going to, uh, maybe uh, we're going to do some research, uh, 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 you know, uh, cleaner, you know, kills it instantly. Maybe we can do something like that, uh, you know, internally, maybe. Uh, putting it inside of people, put the light inside of like he's thinking that you can put light inside of people. And you know the worst part about all of this, his dumb ass is still gonna get reelected. Yep. At this point, the only way he doesn't get reelected is if uh, like Chris Cuomo runs with Lori Lightfoot as his running mate. <laughs> That's the only way. Donald Trump's not getting reelected because Joe that's Biden. A, that's a winning do. team right there, my nigga. Yeah, <laughs> winning team. Andrew Cuomo and Lori Lightfoot, I'm voting for that team immediately. You can have all my votes. If I can, I'm voting twice. Every time Donald Trump gets up at one of those COVID uh, uh, coronavirus uh, briefings, he he just proves why he is completely unsuited for this job or just, you know, just life. <laughs> Um. So so yeah. Uh. To why not? We might as well. I mean, he he has emeritus status, but why not? Fuck it. I'm a conscientious uh, so, objector. I'm not right. even that. All right. So to you, uh, President Donald Trump, uh, for all of the foolishness that comes out of your mouth each and every day, uh, we say to you, nigga, please. please. An- anybody else? I mean, should we get all these dumbass protesters? 
I mean, we can we can get there's so many. We can get the protesters. We can get the people that were actually dumb enough. Yeah, to these actually, crackers ain't worth. These crackers is not worth my time. Yeah, yeah, I guess it ain't worth. These it. crackers is not worth my time. These crackers is not worth my time. No, no, no. <laughs> these I'm, crackers are crazy. Yeah. No, right. let them no. let them let them protest because like they protesting over nothing. Like not. Equal pay or equal rights or anything like that, but they they mad because they can't or, go out or or, or clean drinking or like a uh, drinking water, like they right. rights to their drinking water, or like you know the fact that motherfucking coronavirus done killed more people in the Navajo Nation than the totals killed in thirteen states in the yes. fucking Say union. It. Like Say fuck that. these crackers, Say man. That. Fuck yeah. these white ass people. People Our are dying. Is- Personally, I'm always a fan of good old fashioned Darwinism. I, I I've said repeatedly that we as a species need to thin our herd. So if they stepping up and volunteering to go, let them. They ain't gonna get sick. The only hope is that they shoot each other. Either way, because yeah, no, Trump is never getting the coronavirus. Because yeah, no, nah, uh, evil never dies. Evil. Say he could have it and lie about it. He ain't gonna tell the truth. Touche. Very true. Yeah. Evil never dies, though. And he uh, always looked fucking sick. So how would we know? Right. He's sick and he's always got that cocaine sniffle. You I'm trying to tell that? you, y'all. And plus, the presidency is an easy thing to like. The manip- the media is hard to manipulate, but the presidency is easy. Like, there's precedent. It's not easy, but it's there's precedent for faking the presidency before. Like, Woodrow Wilson's was like half dead and his wife had to run it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, FDR's in a wheelchair. Nobody knew. I yeah. ain't know that shit. Polio. What? What? Oh, polio. What the fuck? Anybody got any plugs? Anybody got any projects that they're they're streaming? I'm gonna try to be a part of a think a Zoom stage reading of forgetting Sarah Marshall. <laughs> one of my Ooh. friends. What about friends made the uh, offer on Facebook? I was like, I'm in. It's getting kind of hard to believe things are going to get better. Marcus, I'm going to watch that, so please make sure you send a link. If I get in, I will. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah, please make sure to, uh, to post that link. Uh, I'm doing open mic uh, comedy each and every Thursday live on my YouTube page. I think I may try Facebook this week just as, a, as an interesting kind of change of pace. Uh, comics from all around the country get on, and we just hang out and, and just talk shit is fun uh last week uh we had some technical difficulties uh the week before that we had a uh, past uh black nerd power comedy hour performer dedrick flynn uh to come through and do his thing so yeah we have we have a lot of fun you should check that out um but as always you can always find us any and everywhere on the social medias you can find us on facebook you can find us on twitter you can find us on instagram uh on uh facebook with the ones with the blue check on twitter uh, we are at BMP if you're nasty, and on Instagram we are at black dot nerd dot power. But I think that's gonna do it for us this week, guys. What do you think? Yeah, 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 man. Yeah, we had a good time. Yeah, we did. Always, it's always, so hey, nice to see you all. Always, yeah, yeah, yeah. good to see you, yeah. man. Always fun. Can't wait till I get to the point where I can hug you next. That'd be. I nice. know it'd be nice to see you again. Grayson's gonna be so tall next time I see her. Nigga, she all legs. So Man. yeah, you know, she absolutely will. Uh, but that's gonna do it for us this week. Thank you all. Richard Douglas Jones, and on behalf of myself and my other co-hosts, Mr. Marcus Seabury. All right, Dean. And Miss Kimber. Bye. Thank you so much. This has been Black Nerd Power. We'll be back next week. Same Black Nerd Time, same Black Nerd Channel. We out. Black Nerd Power, produced by Richard Douglas Jones and some outspoken introvert. Hosted by Richard Douglas Jones, Marcus Seabury, and Miss Kimber. Music curation, some random dude and his friends and their cousin. What? Say what again? Recorded, produced, and distributed by Kazuki. Kazuki.